Hey, it's Mikey from KX 94.7. Welcome to the KX Country Clubhouse, where we have taken the show on the road this afternoon and set up shop here at the legendary Horseshoe Tavern in Toronto, where we are being joined by one of these guys at the forefront of this new country renaissance coming out of California. Mr. Nate Smith. Hey, hey, how's, how's it going there, man? Good, man. How Thanks are for you? Me in. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm really well. I'm, I'm glad to represent California, you know? Look, dude, the, uh, the last time we chatted was over Zoom. Yep. Uh, you'll be happy to know that the powers that be asked me to wear pants today. Okay. So I did. What's wrong with shorts? Well, Shorts and cowboy boots? Shorts and cowboy boots. Uh, it could be a move. I did the other night. <laughs> did I was you? drinking tequila wearing shorts and cowboy boots. I looked like a <laughs> doofus, but I loved it. I loved it. It, look, was a, it was a huge hit, you know? Look, man, Zoom is great uh, for what it was, but it's good to see you face to face. Uh, you know, Me too. when you're on Zoom, you're like, you're, you're party up top and then party below deck, right? <laughs> so uh, it's good to see you here at the Horseshoe Tavern. The last time we did chat, uh, we were on the precipice of your debut album coming out. Now that it is out, out there in the world, yeah. what's the response been? Uh, man, people have been singing the songs that, that I've been holding in. It's really cool to see. Like, like last night we played here and like songs like Oil Spot and some of these other ones, you know, like hearing them sing those, I'm like, oh my gosh. Like, cause Whiskey, obviously you guys have crushed it for me yeah. uh, and, and helped get the, the word out on that one. So everybody knows that one for the most part in that, like my music, but to hear them know all these other songs that I've been holding on to is like, it's amazing. It's so amazing. you are noticing more and more people singing the words back to you while every on song, stage. Every really? song. Really? Every okay, single cool. one of them. I can't believe it. Well, yeah. dude, this this is a damn album. Buddy. Like, these days, it's it's unheard of when you have this many songs out on a record. You, you're lucky to get maybe, you know, 10, 11 songs on know, an album. I know. Mostly singles. And, Mostly yeah. singles. 26 songs on the deluxe edition of this record. How many did you have ready to go for this project and how as an artist how do you narrow that down to the 20 on this record and the 26 Such on the deluxe question. well thank you sony for uh, <laughs> letting me put out so many songs that's expensive you know yeah. to cut that many sides and all the mixing and the musicians and stuff um but yeah no i mean i've got a really good um i got a good team around me um that we listen through all the demos so everything that i've ever written over the last three years we are picking from so um, we picked 20 that were like, hey, this is, this is great. And then we decided to move back the album release date to, um, from February um, to April. So um, <clears throat> when we did that, it, I ended up writing a few more songs. And that's how we got the deluxe. That's how we got World on Fire. Um, and uh, I'm so glad because the cool thing is, is like, like songs like Sleeve and Under My Skin, I recorded those songs almost three years ago. Yeah. Um, and then like songs like you know, World on Fire, Love is Blind, When an Angel I Ain't and stuff, those are all, I record them this month. So like it's the most current. So like you could see the growth like in, my, in, in the entire timeline of my music and stuff in right. one album. And I think that's, that's what's so special to me about it, you know, and, and I'm grateful for it. So you wrote the bulk of the songs on this record, like over 75% yeah. of the songs. Take us into your, into your writing process. Yeah, Do you have course. a favorite place to write? Do you have to be in a certain mood or a certain mindset to put pen to paper? It, so I, I love to have a producer with me. So Lindsey Rhymes is there a lot who produced Whiskey on You and This World on Fire. Um, so like so sometimes we start with a vibe, like there might be a track that's happening and stuff. I'm a huge believer in melody. Melody to me is like the thing that makes the song catchy and it, and it, it can be something that really grabs you and feel emotional. And then from the melody, then we're inserting the lyrics into that, like right. a puzzle. Um, but if the melody isn't strong, if it doesn't like lift up in the chorus and feel emotional and stuff, I don't feel like we nailed it. You know? right. So that's my process. Um, sometimes, and then usually real life experiences, I have a list of stories in my phone. I've got um, a bunch of song titles and stuff, um, but always trying to get something personal. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, some of the tracks that stick out to me, I mean, Sleeve, one of the top uh, it's my tracks. Song. It's Hands one down. of the best songs, uh, World on Fire. Uh, dear Heart, Bad Memory, like I could go on. If I could stop loving you, uh, Wreckage, Whiskey on You, which by the way spent six weeks at number one here in Canada. Six weeks at number one, dude. In this amazing country. Dude. Yeah. Like that, that's unbelievable. And like to be, uh, you know, a, a, an artist from the, the States, to have that happen here is obviously really rare um, and, and special. Okay, so is it true when you were, you were writing and recording the demo for Whiskey on You, that's what we hear. That is on a the demo. Radio. That is a That's demo. That's the demo. Yeah, just mixed. So the vocal was two days after my breakup okay. um, with my ex girlfriend. And so I was, it was pretty raw and fresh and yeah. all that. So we didn't, yeah, we just mixed it. <laughs> okay. So am I crazy or am I correct in assuming that, all right, all right, all right, Matthew McConaughey and Days and Confused? 
Is that is that kind of a callback? It's such a nod. It's such yeah, a nod. Okay. We're, we're hoping, you know, like my, my team reached out to him. And uh, I don't know, we'll, we'll hear back hopefully. But uh, we're hoping that he, he hears it and goes, oh my gosh, you know. And I know yeah. he likes country music. All right, all right, so all right. So it would be really cool if he got involved with that. Okay, so when it comes to, uh, when it comes to the track listing, uh, the first track on the record, If I Could Stop Loving You, mm. was there a rhyme or a reason why that song yes. led off this debut record? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, it could have been Sleeve. It definitely could have been. Um, yeah. But If I Could Stop Loving You, like, I think in a lot of ways, like, represents me really well. Like, I feel like it, it shows, like, these, the, the epic emotional kind of thing. With a really hooky chorus that catches on to you that is real from a real place. Um, I'm like, I think that's the right song to put on there first. You know, so I chose that as the opener. Yeah. Well, Nate, we're, we're here at the Horseshoe Tavern, legendary music venue in the city of Toronto, a bucket list venue for a lot of Canadian artists. Uh, a who's who of, of musicians have played in this venue. And you can see it just looking at the pictures on the wall, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, is, there, is there any bucket list venues that you would love to play somewhere down the line in your career? There's quite a few. Um, Rogers would be good. Okay. Rogers would be good. Bud Light's happening um, soon with uh, Dean Brody yes. coming back. Yeah. Um, in the States, um, you know, I would love to play. Um, where I'm from, it's it's there's a place called the the Toyota Amphitheater. Okay. Um, that's in Northern California. I want to play that. Um, Red Rocks obviously would be like a, a huge one to do yeah. and stuff. At Madison Square Garden. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm shooting high, I guess. I don't know. Like, <laughs> Aim high. Reach for the clutch. No, so you did mention the uh, the Dean Brody show, the Brodeo. Yeah. Coming back to the KX Brodeo. Country. The Brodeo oh is at, K, uh, at the Budweiser stage here in KX Country on August 24th. Have you met Dean before? No. You've never met no, Dean? No, I'm going to. I can't wait. Okay. He is one of the nicest, most laid back guys yeah. in music today. Okay. You're going to have absolutely no fun at the Budweiser Anything stage. Anything you know about him that I could like, like, like mess with him somewhere. All right. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk. We'll talk <laughs> off the air. So, do you remember um, the weirdest place you've ever played? So I asked I asked Keith Urban this question, and Keith's answer was a baggage claim. Okay. What? Yeah, he played a baggage claim at an airport in Australia. So where where's the weirdest <laughs> place that you have ever performed? One of the weirdest places that I've ever performed was uh, the parking lot of a strip club. <laughs> um, so so I, I did that. The green room where I got dressed was where the, where the dancers get yeah. ready. So there's high heels I'm tripping over and there's like foo-foo things. I'm like, it could be a look. No, it's not a look. Okay. And then like, I'm putting my boots on in there, but it was, it was a fun show. People showed yeah. up and uh, it paid me well, you know, in ones. Um, that wasn't your first paid gig, was it? <laughs> that wasn't my first paid gig. I think my first paid gig was um, in Chico. Yeah. Okay. At the commons. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So I know we're up against it here. So a couple of rapid fire questions okay. uh, just to, just to get us out of here. Nate Smith, what is the, Last thing you do before going on stage? Let's see. Last thing I do. Very, very last. Um, we huddle as a band, and we come up with a new thing to say every single night. So maybe we'll pick okay. on somebody. Maybe, maybe we'll just say Mater's on three. That's what I call my band. It just depends. But that's the last thing we do, and then I'm standing there waiting to hop up. So First thing you do when you come off stage? Uh, towel, water, bus, <laughs> fan. Immediately. <laughs> I'm literally drenched. I could wring my hair yeah. out. Um, first thing I do. Okay. Do you I have guess. a nickname? Uh, my mom called me Boo Boo when I was a baby. Um, I, I wanted to be called Speedy when I was a kid, but I, okay. I thought I was fast. I thought I could <laughs> run fast. I was like, you guys all have to call me Speedy. And uh, speedy. literally, and they're like, okay, Speedy. <laughs> like, 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 I'm like, call me Speedy, man. And they're like, sure, dude, you're really slow. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's, that, those are my nicknames. Who's the loudest snorer on the bus? Me. Man, I had my money on Stefan. You did? Yeah. He doesn't snore. Really? He doesn't snore, that's unless I don't hear him. But, I'm I, I'm sawing logs. All okay. Night. Yeah. Who's the bartender on the bus? Stefan. Stefan. Stefan's the bartender. Stefan is like a cocktail <laughs> guy. Yeah. You know. All right. So you get to host a late night t uh, late night TV talk show. Who's the first person you would love to interview? Hmm. Hmm. First one. That's really good. Let's go with. Um, let's go with Zach Alphanakis. Okay. You know, I've Between been, I've been, two ferns. I've been told that there's some similarities. Yeah, uh, I, I see some it. Some people have said that on things, <laughs> yeah. and like, it, it cracks me up. Yeah. I was literally, no joke, uh, opening for Morgan Wallen a few weeks ago, and somebody in the audience <laughs> held up their phone. You know how they have like little words like, play this song, whatever. Yeah. He just showed a picture of Zach <laughs> Alphanakis, and he goes, <laughs> I'm like, damn, savage, savage. Lyrics aside, what's the, uh, what's the weirdest thing you have memorized? <laughs> or the most random thing you have memorized? Um, different parts of, uh, of a cell, endoplasmic reticulum, mitochondria, 
Um, kind of science guy. That kind of over stuff, here. I guess. I don't know. Okay. Man. Favorite Nirvana song? Ooh. Um, is it Francis Farmer Revenge? Is it, is it, is it. God, there's so many, dude. I'm trying to think. I mean, Drain You, you probably. Drain You. Yeah. yeah. You could go Polly. I love Polly, Territorial Pissings. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's hard to say, man. Beautiful. Um, all apologies. This, this is tough. Yeah. This is tough for me. Well, he is Nate Smith. We are live here at the Horseshoe Tavern in Toronto for a sold out show tonight. Nate Smith, LFG. If you know, you know. Thanks for spending some time hey, in the clubhouse with us. Love you, man. Cheers. Appreciate it.